All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. Let's look at a couple things. For one, that's a, that's a beautiful EEG signal, isn't it? Okay. So this is, basic, this is basically a random noise signal that we're just pumping in here. But let me show you something, for instance, for those of us who like to default notch filters on to see what kind of trick it can play on us. What I'm going to do here, before I do that, I'm going to put up a specific display called Mini Brain Mirror, and it's FFT. See this right here? See how we see amplitude pretty much from the top all the way down? And it's kind of straight. You don't have that Christmas tree effect where your higher frequencies, amplitude tends to be a little lower. So watch what happens as I, I turn on my notch filters. I'm going to click on the 60 hertz notch. See how it shrunk this down? Now, I still have a pretty nasty looking signal, but it's starting to resemble something. Okay? Now, if I go back to data and I go to the 50, okay, now all of a sudden I have a, a, a brain mirror that looks normal or at least resembles normal. And then all of a sudden I have a raw EEG that could trick you. Did you turn 60 off or you just added both of them? I added both of them because a lot of people make the mistake of having them both defaulted on. Now the beautiful thing about that is anytime you hook up electrodes, you're going to have a clean signal. Bad thing is you probably won't be training EEG. Okay? So this is a great example of defaulting notch filters on without knowing what the raw wave looks like first is a bad thing. Okay? Uh, what do you use this uh, FFT for? Well, that's the fast Fourier transform, and it's just how the display, what is the underpinnings that is essentially getting wordy here. Um, what you see here is a representation of the information that's gathered and put through the FFT. What use is it? Well, a lot of people can look at this. And depending if there's abnormalities, oftentimes there's something that sticks out that usually is not going is supposed to. Either something's too low or too high in an area. For instance, if you're looking up here in the yellow and you have maybe a larger spike up in the high beta, most of the time you're not going to see that. And it would t it would tend to tell you that they may have a increased high beta issue. And if that then also coincides with they have some anxiety symptoms that they're complaining about, it would kind of make sense. You've got to look at this a few times. After you, the more times you look at this, the more it starts making sense. To sure, because you're going to see a normal person's going to have a, a signature relatively similar to most, you know, somebody else. Pretty now, pretty is that a normative database and should you be using that for diagnostics? Probably not. Right. Okay, but it's, it's a display that somebody can use also to train. If there's something either too high or too low that you can try to, they can look at that and, and try to alter the, the picture, basically. Okay. 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 I'm sorry, Don, I couldn't hear you. Great question. That's actually a new option that from the display option window is text stat line with each waveform. It's not, ex now this is one of the exceptions to the rule. This is not on off from the training screen. This is on off from this panel. Okay, and that also needs to be selected if you were doing impedances. Hmm? We don't get impedances because we're running simulation. So the use of that would be? The use of what? Uh, that, that text for, for the waveform. Uh, it's right, yeah. If you want a average amplitude, the, the current threshold, the percent time that it's meeting it, and one of the other fields it adds along the top, you're going to get basically the impedances per channel that are the numbers that are 
controlling the lights on the front of the Atlantis. It says it won't be saved, though. I'm sorry? It says it won't, that text thing will not be saved. Because you're in a pre-built protocol. If I printed that at the end of my baseline, this, this would give me where they are right now with everything. Would it not? It would, but we have a better way to do that. We have a report that gives you that in a more functional form than doing a screenshot. Yeah. Right. 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 And aren't those same features in text stats on, on the display as well? Correct. They're just not then on the waveform. Right. We haven't, yeah, we'll get there in a second. What is that event 5 FG for Allah? All okay. Too far ahead. Okay. Slow down. Sorry. All right. So, we're up at the top. We see a white waveform. We know that's the raw. We see two pink lines around that raw waveform. Okay? <clears throat> now, what are those? Those are the artifact rejection threshold. Why do we see them? Because Bill changed them to 90 instead of 240. If you left them on 240, they're off of the screen. You don't see them. And if they're not up there on the screen, it's 240. It means that you're up at 240 or something above about 100 or 110, and that's why you can't visually see them. They're out of the visual field. I got the demo. The, the demo is defaulted to 240. You won't see them, but you can get them to show up. If you, for instance, if I hit the R key, do you see how they tighten up? Okay, I've moved them in. So if you just sit there and hit the R key, you should see them then come into the screen because they're just parked outside the visual field on the screen right now. Now everything's Well, that's because you went too tight. Wait a minute. <coughs> I hit R key and what? Just R. R brings it in. Shift R brings it out if you go too tight. Artifact rejection threshold. This is, for instance, right now, the way I have it set, do you notice it's kind of just following right along my peaks and valleys? I'm not seeing any pink um, segments. I'm not seeing anything tell me correct EEG signal. This could go on all day, and I would never have an artifact removed. But if the person blinked real heavy or coughed or sneezed or moved, and it spiked the EEG a little more, that would then, that sample would be removed. Is this only in the Delta van? No, this is nothing to do with the Delta van. This is only in the raw. This is, if you look up at the top here, this is around the raw. If I want to see the Delta, if I click on Delta, here's my Delta band. So, so hitting R, that's the only one I see changing on my screen. Well, what's happening is you've probably got done this. You've probably crossed them over and it's down in the Delta range. Make sure your cap your caps lock's not on and you're not going the opposite direction. If it's on, see now that's a great example. This is a great example. His caps lock's on, he's hitting the R key from now till doomsday and what's happening? It's just getting wider and wider and wider and wider and you'll never <coughs> see it. Now you have to turn it around and that's why set it for 90 and you'll see it on the training screen when you start and then you can adjust it up or down real quick and easy. You're not chasing it when you can't see it. Where do you set it? Data channels, you set it originally in the first screen we looked at in data channels. Okay.